Good afternoon, everyone. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, we celebrate the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God in three divine persons. We ask the presence of the Trinity to guide us on our way as one community moving forward to, towards our salvation. And may we always be inspired by the Holy Spirit to do, to do what is right. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to be full of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore. Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your, uni your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated.
A reading from the book of Proverbs. Thus says the wisdom of God. The Lord possessed me, the beginning of his ways, the forerunner of his prodigies of long ago. From of old I was poured forth at the first before the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains or springs of water. Before the mountains were settled into place, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet the earth and fields were not made, nor the first clods of the world. When the Lord established the heavens, I was there when he marked out the vault over the face of the deep, when he made firm from the skies above, when he fixed fast the foundation of the earth, when he set for the sea its limit so that the waters should not transgress his command. Then was I beside him as his craftsman, and I was his delight day by day, playing before him all the while, playing on the surface of his earth. And I found the light in the human race. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace 
in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we even boast of our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance proven character, and proven character hope, and hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a while. As we have said at the beginning, this Sunday is the celebration of the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. This dogma is one of the most fundamental teachings in Christian religion. We were taught that there is one God, but there are three divine persons. Actually, this dogma is one of the most profound teachings in the Catholic Church, and many theologians would even avoid talking about this because they say this is a mystery. But while we acknowledge that this is a mystery, that our human mind is incapable of understanding completely, of course, our heart is big enough to embrace and believe that there is really one God in three divine persons. After all, our life begins and ends in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, especially every time we celebrate the liturgy. We begin the Mass in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. When we were baptized, we were baptized in the Trinity, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. When the priest absorbs your sin, he does it in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the last thing that the priest would do when we die is to bless us again in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So even if the dogma on the Trinity is a mystery, the fact that we have been uh, talking uh, and, 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 and uh, celebrating in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Somehow, 
we can understand you know, what the dogma is all about. And I personally believe that we can fully, or not fully, but uh, somehow uh, more deeply understand the dogma or the mystery of the Trinity by trying to reflect on the highlights in the life of Jesus Christ. For example, we meditate and prepared for the coming of his birth on the Advent season. And of course, on Christmas time, we celebrate his birth. And eventually, we are all joyful because Jesus manifested himself publicly. After which, after some time, we again prepared or prepare for the Paschal mystery during Lenten season. We prepare for the celebration of his death and his resurrection. And on Easter, we pondered the richness of the new life brought by Christ to us. Then the gift of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. Trying to reflect on this event, we realize that the three divine persons has been completely revealed in the person of Christ. You know, Jesus was sent by the Father and he became one of us. So that in the person of Christ, the Father has been revealed. Yahweh refuses to become or to, 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 to remain just a simple theological entity. He refuses to remain so distant that when Jesus was born, the Father has been revealed in the person of Christ. Of course, after Jesus had uh, done his mission, you know, when he accomplished everything on, on earth, even before he went back to the Father, he promised that he would send the Holy Spirit or the Father would send the Holy Spirit in his name so that his presence may continue to be felt by the people. So somehow, the Holy Spirit has been uh, revealed or has been felt by the people again in the name of Jesus. So we realize that in the person of Christ, the Trinity has been revealed. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And also, in the many instances, Jesus speak or speaks of his relationship between the Father and the Spirit as if these two uh, persons were different from him. And there are also time when uh, he was speaking uh, about the Father and the, and the Spirit as if they are one and the same. So it's really very difficult. While we acknowledge that they are distinct, we also acknowledge that they are one. You see, uh, that, that every person or every divine person has his um, uh, function, but taken collectively, they are only one God. So it's really uh, very difficult, but as I said, while the human brain is limited, our faith is huge to be able to accept and embrace the fact. What Christ knows and possesses comes to him. Thus, it possesses everything that the other has. For example, what Jesus has, the, 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 the Spirit and the Father also possess. And uh, when Jesus uh, talks about the Father and the Spirit, he indicates to us that they are simultaneously distinct and identical separate and one. If you can be able to unveil the mystery behind it, good for you. But I don't think you can. Because even St. Augustine, one of the most, uh, you know, uh, one of the greatest theologians we have was not able to do that. Because that is the mystery. Because he is God. And no one can be able to uh, unfold the mystery behind this dogma. But again, because we feel 
the presence of the triune God. We can simply say, yes, there is one God, but, uh, you know, they are, uh, they, they, they could be dis distinct, but th at the same time, they are one. You could just imagine, have you, uh, uh, if you try to, to understand the first reading from the book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs in the first reading was talking about the wisdom of God. But as we try to go along, as we try to read, we realize that we probably end up with the question, who is wisdom there? Is it Christ? Is it the Father? Or is it the Holy Spirit? But just the same, it is the wisdom of God. Sometimes the wisdom could be the one creating. Sometimes the wisdom is the one who being created. But at the end, we realize that the wisdom of God is indeed very profound. So my dear friends, more than trying to unveil the mystery, I guess the lesson that we can get from the solemnity is to truly allow the Trinity to direct our lives as individuals as, as a and as a community. We allow the Trinity to be at work constantly in us. We know that uh, the, the, that God in three divine persons allow us to experience the love of God in many different ways. Like in God the Father, we have somebody who creates everything for us. And in Jesus, we have someone who came to redeem all of us from our sinfulness. And in the Spirit, we have the presence of God who sanctifies and who leads us to all truth. So that the presence of this divine person makes us grow in our spiritual journey. More than trying to understand it completely, which I don't think we can, it's just, uh, you know, the, talent, the, the challenge is just to uh, embrace the richness of the mystery behind the dogma on Trinity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As adopted children of a loving Father, we bring our prayers to Christ through the aid of the Holy Spirit. That the church may experience the depth of God's love, transforming us into true disciples, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That God in three persons might touch the hearts of all people, creating peace and love in places torn by war and hate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That all students who are graduating this month might use their gifts from God to make this world a better place, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. 
that the sick and dying among us may find comfort, peace, and strength in God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We remember all those who have died, especially John Ozemek. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for the special intentions of the Church of the Resurrection, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our personal intentions in silence, we pray. We pray to the Lord. Lord, on this feast of the Holy Trinity, help us to love others as you, the Son and Spirit, have loved us and give us the strength to proclaim this message to all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Bless through you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the divine and white of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart may be accepted by you, O Lord, may sacrifice your sight, peace they be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, 
You are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good, through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all, peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. May receiving the sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and divided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go for it, the Mass is ended. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Thank you.